it for a few days now. Um, but Enhanced Surveillance was very interesting tool in the Blue-White Miracles deck. I think that there is one other shell that goes in, at least at least that I have at the moment, and this is uh, this combo deck with Underworld Breach and Dragon Regis Channeler. If you have Enhanced Surveillance um, and an Underworld Breach and a Dragon Regis Channeler, and, and of course... With what's what's cool about Underworld Breach is these cards just have to be in your graveyard, and then you can, uh, <laughs> and then you can go off. Um, every time you play a Mistress Bobble, you get to surveil three, and then you get to just surveil three, Mistress Bobble, surveil three, Mistress Bobble, over and over and over again until you get to cast your Thassa's Oracle, cast your entire deck. This is not a super new formula for modern exactly, where enhanced surveillance is is more or less just grinding station. Uh, it's doing a very similar thing. Um, where Grinding Station is like this good self mill enabler, but I, I think Enhanced Surveillance is significantly better, where instead of just being a two-mana do-nothing, not that this card does a ton, but it this, this does give you a, a, a crazy amount of card selection in combination with your Surveil Lands, your Channelers, and your Considers. Consider is Surveil 3, draw a card. Your, your Thundering Falls enter tapped and they Surveil 3, which will allow you to dig super duper deep to like either like bin your Channeler, bin your Bobble, and find your copy of Underworld Breach to, to win the game with. Um, we've also played a lot of like fair decks with Thoughtbound Phantasm, and I, I feel somewhat confidently that in this shell, Thoughtbound Phantasm is better than Ragavan. This is, I think, a really, really good plan A, plan B, like a, a good way to win the game if your opponent is interacting with your breach combo plan if they're graveyard hating you it, oh, and it, you can even just <laughs> it's not a bad way to win the game otherwise this card just gets so so big so quickly if you haven't seen it is a one mana two two that uh, whenever you surveil you put a plus one counter on it combination with the thundering falls considers channelers goes crazy even and even when you're not comboing even if you can't like full combo just being able to go like phantasm channeler bobble bobble you could just make like su such big creatures such big creatures um and I, I think I think that you know breach combo in general kind of has like suffered from like it's it's like existing formula has been kind of tough where your curve is either kind of high right where you're playing the one ring and you're playing to fairy time raveler or and or you're playing like grinding station mox amber and these cards are like really weak to like hyper efficient interaction where you just like get picked apart really hard. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes you have some color issues, like some people are playing, like, four colors, like they're splashing four, like Teferi and Haywire Might, and they're playing Urza Saga. And th this build just, it seems so, like, mean and lean and clean. So mean and lean and clean, you have three enhanced surveillances, you have one Oracle, all these cards individually aren't very strong. The rest of this is, you know, more or less just, you know, modern staples, hyper high, super high power level. Um, yeah, we're not playing any Legends, we're not playing any Mox, we're not playing Emery. We're playing Thoughtbound Phantasm, but I do think this card is quite good. I'm also only playing six one-mana removal spells in the main deck. This kind of might look a little odd, but I I, I kind of I kind of don't think Lightning Bolt is very good in modern right now. I uh, I think a couple copies so you can like breach Bolt Bolt is is nice to have, and Bolt is not unplayable. He is he is really good. He is like I think the best one-mana red removal spell or best one-mana removal spell in general at the moment. Um, but not that many decks get to play it, so this getting to be a Holy Heat deck is very exciting to me, but. Uh, just like there's so many four toughness creatures, which is why you've been seeing me play Flame Slash in a, in a lot of builds. Oh, awesome! Magical, very cool. We have a green land for pick your poison. Yes, we have a. I, I so I, I think if I'm playing like 18 lands, I want to have my green source in the sideboard, so I have a breeding pool on the side when I bring in the pick your poisons. <laughs> it's kind of nice to just have your mana be good, better in every single game where you don't have the pick your poisons in the, in the deck, which is a lot of games. I kind of think that's worth one sideboard slot. Um. I think if I was and when I've been playing like 20, 21, 22 lands and splashing pick your poison, I'll play the I'll play the green source in the main deck. That's kind of been my current thing. And my last match go last night, uh, I lost. Yeah, I, our pirate deck does have breaches. Yeah, yeah, we're playing uh, we're playing breaches and we're playing Scallywag in scam. Basically, it's not not the craziest thing ever, but Scally but like Scallywag has been a really really good two drop. Uh, I even considered playing it in this deck. Yeah, they pitch Violent Outburst. Uh, both both, both uh, Thoughtbound Phantasm and Legend Shredder are really good tools against Rhinos, so I'm kind of happy to just have both here. I think you should have kept Channeler on that one turn instead of double blocking. Yeah, maybe. The, I, I, was, I was still dead, though, so I hope that helps. I don't know. I, I, I knew I had the Phantasm, but if I, if I, if I just go chump, chump take four, they have three lethal attackers, I have two blockers, I need to... 
it's it's still pretty bad uh, shape to be in. Yeah, I'll pull up the Rakdos deck. I'm I'm pretty excited about it. It's, we also have four patches in the deck, so like, bas- basically the the thought is that I I don't think Bowmasters is super good at the moment. It's okay, but I've been I think me and a lot of other Bowmaster players have been kind of unimpressed with the card. I've been very impressed with Scallywag. I want to see how it plays in in this deck. Um, and I think if you're just playing four Ragivan, four Scallywag, Breaches is a Breaches is a <laughs> good three drop. Uh it's like really good at getting Ragavan through blockers too. Yeah, I don't think I super care about them cascading next turn. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Probably discard a heat over the counter spell. So So you want to keep drawing spells to like connive away with the shredder. Calling the deck Pirates is the real scam? I don't know, brother. I got four Breaches and four Scallywags in my modern deck. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm cheating, y'all. Well, Risen Reef... Oh, this is this is Glimpse combo. Okay, this is Glimpse combo. Cool. I guess I should have known that off the Colony Garden. I just... <laughs> I've been playing against so much Rhinos lately. It's like... <laughs> it's hard to... Hard to tell. Yeah, we, we we have a pi- we have a pirate payoff in our deck. It's this is pirate tribal, and you'd rather watch this than like Captain Landry Storm or whatever. I still have fluster storms in this matchup. Ami Nami. Yeah, definitely feel like I can try. I can potentially even let the, a glimpse resolve, and then if I play the enhanced surveillance and find a breach off the surveil three, let me play this flooded strand though, so that I could potentially connive into into a counter spell. You have solitude, or is, what's going on here? Is reading enhanced surveillance? Look at the list of playable pirates. Feel like they're a pirate payoff away from having some real legs as a tribal deck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I agree. Like Ragavan is, is being a pirate is obviously a huge deal. Scalawag also is just a very good, very good card. Graveyard of Scion of Draco. So connive and a spell pierced or counter spell would obviously be kind of ideal. I could maybe connive. I guess I guess let's surveil three. I have three spell piercers and three counter spells, so I, I remove I remove three outs, but I get to get three looks at, at one first, which feels obviously bad now that <laughs> I see this counter spell. Although I don't know if there's a way to tell if it was the top card or not. Spell pierce. Not quite that lucky. Okay, although glimpse is still glimpse combo. <laughs> <laughs> Still glimpse combo, I guess. Bio Prodigy, 25 months. Thank you, welcome back. Thank you. Glad you're still liking the stream after all this time. We do have two Scions. Uh, if we can connive off the Shredder, that would go a long way to surviving. So spell this turn and probably the best spell we could have drawn. I guess maybe Underworld Breach. Try to connive a spell to, or surveil a, a spell to the top here to connive away, and which just kind of hurts to lose this iteration. Getting getting the uh, the shredder up to three five is the priority here, so let's just go ahead and make sure we do that. They do have this big first strike wall, also. Ooh. Although now I can go, yeah. Now now I'm just gonna cast the breach, and then. We maybe are not going to draw our entire deck, but we are going to. Yeah, I think I maybe have enough cards in my graveyard to where I can just like I can float the Oracle, or I guess I don't need to float Oracle. I can just I can just float the next Underworld Breach that I find, find, or I can float the last Underworld Breach because there's one, only one left in the deck. I suppose it's kind of risky because I have to like 
count. I have to like maintain like how many cards I'm drawing off Bobble, and then I have to think about losing to Force of Negation. But at the very least, I think I can just take these game actions I I, I have already, if that makes sense. Let's go see what they're drawing if they don't shuffle. I need to get the um, yeah. Let's, let's go ahead and float this breach a little bit. I need to get the uh, phantasm up to eleven power to be to, to overpower the scions. Although it will just get chumped by a. Uh, it will just get chumped by the agent this turn. They typically don't have forces. Glimpse combo doesn't play force anymore? I, I, I'm i definitely used to Glimpse combo playing a lot of forces. Like, I don't know why you're not playing force of negation in your Vion Outburst combo deck. Yeah, I think I'm just going to float both, because if the first one gets force, it's pretty tough. I mean, they're also like a ley line of the ley line of the guild pack deck. Why would you not have four force in your main? They play salty. I don't know. But I mean, I imagine there's some subtleties in there. Seventy five. It's not a permanent count for glimpse. Yeah, but like, it's, I've I've played against a lot of glimpse combo. They almost always have force of negation. I feel. I, I maybe my I, you know my 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 brain ain't been so good lately, but this is something I. <laughs> I feel like I'm going crazy even thinking, like you can you can play some number of non permanents for glimpse. You don't have to, you know, like, and like force of negation is like kind of the the main one that you would want. We're not doing too much more here. Oh, they're on zero. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they are on zero, and I just am out of touch. But I've definitely. I, there's, it's also the thing about glimpse too. Is like there's been so many builds of glimpse over the years. People have like tried to break it so many times, and it's it's you know not really a deck that gets broken. Alright, that's probably good. Back with our 15-15. Return. Get a full hand. Deck Fade Imposter list. Was I was Dak playing Force Negation in this build? Went through a bunch of glimpse, exactly one has force negation. I, I guess I'm just out of touch. Obviously I haven't there hasn't been a ton of glimpse lately. I may be thinking of like more like historical builds. But just, just in general, like, not playing Force of Negation in your, like, Violent Outburst deck is, feels so wild to me. But also, like, a lot of people are not playing Force of Negation in their Gorios deck, and I think that that's really... Like, I, I think you just should main deck four Gorios in, in the, uh... Four Force of Negation in the Gorios list. You just have enough blue cards, and you're an instant speed combo deck. It's, like, a super good hit off of Traxa. Uh, maybe I'm out of touch. Okay, so... Take four... We do gain eight here. It's like yeah, you're you're also just playing Leyline. I don't know. I don't know. Don't have a counter spell in my hand. I guess I do have the spell Pierce. I almost feel like I should go Channeler, Phantasm, Bobble, and just. I guess they get to chomp up this Channeler pretty good. I mean, I could, of course, just win with the Reach Oracle if I think there's no chance of subtlety, no chance of force. But I, like, I know I would play those cards. I think this is okay. I also didn't draw a land. <laughs> also did not draw a land. I have six cards in my library here. So likely keeping a lot of them. It's him to lead on breach and fall back on another play. Do I do I have enough mana to do that? I don't feel like I do.
So we take sin with everything. Block here, then they take twenty one, gain eight up to twenty seven, and then bolt is plus five damage. Five plus twenty one. We'll make even the oracle in the yard. Well, I, I, my opponent may have some interaction, and they're just going to lose. They're just going to lose to be attacking for, over the course of two turns. I could just keep spell pierce up here. Although they, they did have the solitude. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of using the oracle here as a backup plan instead of plan A. Yeah, I guess bolts my channeler would have been the move. I suppose I'm still doing that. Double block with your science chat. You get to gain four more life. Awesome. But but also also like as far as it go as far as the conversation on like getting rid of my graveyard goes, I can I, I can get rid of my library basically at any time. I can I can at, at any time this game delete my entire library. So I don't I don't need to do it now. And if the breach plan doesn't work, I want to be able to win still. Definitely going to bobble them and try to get the information of what they're drawing. If you have six man, you can beat Salty. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it, it'll just be like breach, try to win with Oracle, the Salty, I'll win the next turn. Okay, so now they only have one card in their hand, and there's there's not really any card in the format that wins the game here for them. Re and Thassus because Grape Shot with Surveillance is really easy to deck ourselves. Yeah, yeah, you're not always gonna be able to get twenty Storm. Um, like like this is a good example of like Grape Shot just wouldn't be a win, and then it is of course also the case that the One Ring is pretty good against Grape Shot. Okay, delete our library. <laughs> I did forget about the connive, but I, I, I did have a card left. I forgot that the connive was gonna happen. Okay, that's the Oracle wins another game of Magic. Okay, so we're gonna bring in these Fluster Storms. Um, I'm gonna play some number of Pick Your Poison, probably three. I think I want to play like one. I guess, I, I'm probably not going to breach bolt them often enough to, to keep the bolts in. Let's play like three heat against the Omnath Risen Reef deck, three pick your poison. It's kind of a lot of removal for this matchup, though. Two pick your poison? Like, let's just do two heat. This will be our removal suite. Sorry for rhyming. Could trip a shredder on the draw. It's like you can't really tap out for it on turn two. We have two, though. You don't have to go to no cards for work to work, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit on Devotion, but just, like, I just forgot the connive was going to happen, and if I had d completely deleted my library, I would have lost. I think I'm going to trim a uh, Surveillance and a Shredder. Just kind of don't want to draw two copies of this, these cards early. The Graveyard Hate is for sure Endurance. Yeah, I don't have a super good Endurance plan besides just, like, tank it or counterspell it. Um, I think it's okay. I really wish Stern Scolding could counter Endurance. Nice. So we get to go. It's a little awkward because I want to get Steam Vents and then go Phantasm or Channeler into Channeler Bobble. Get this pretty big pretty fast. Could get Glimpse on turn three. Although maybe that's just okay. It's like we saw last game. Up on Phantasm can kind of solo opponents. Maybe it was right to go Thundering Falls turn... Uh, you know, it was actually better to go Thundering Falls into Breeding Pool. Yeah, sorry. Not the biggest deal. I also have Led on Channel to attack this turn. Keep the Counterspell. Is 
deck was also in Dranath Magistrate. It's unclear if your opponent would bring it in. Because they could, yeah, probably not in this matchup. It's interesting. No stopping ground. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I have three green cards in my deck. I, I have uh, ten fetch lands. The number of fetch lands has changed sometimes. I don't really feel like I need two green sources, and I don't really want any land that taps for just red. Probably. Nine fetch lands. Yeah, I've, I've had ten. I, it's gone through a few different drafts. As it often does, huh? Oh, my Thoughtbound Phantasm. Attack for five. Continue to grow and be strong. Nice to be able to like, snap Counterspell Risen Reef because we have the Fluster Storm. Almost a good turn to value breach. I think it's a little bit better to iterate here expressively. Bobble's a good pickup. I think we are presenting lethal here, of course, but. Or I think we're presenting lethal here, but. You have Solitude, and they also have this Chump Blocker. Well, I guess the Consider isn't cool. You know, it is. Consider is plus two damage here. Yeah, they do chump though. Like my top card, let's draw it. I I love Thoughtbound Phantasm. This has become new official Aspiring Spike pet card. Just random ass uncommon, <laughs> draft uncommon. One mana, eight eight. Interesting that they would play this instead of the agent. Probably doesn't matter a ton. Maybe a little bit better to play agents after this. I think does it matter if I get the storm count higher? I don't think that there's anything that gets me like they they can only really have dispute and dispute doesn't work. But just in case there's something random I'm not thinking of, I'll just get the storm count one higher. Just now, so I don't have to click through and all the triggers in the world. Was it even playable in draft? I don't, I don't know. But it's probably okay. We built around it. We need a full list of aspiring spike pack. Read that one again. I was thinking the Gorehound for some reason. This is, I think, not the first time either. Oh, uh, no, no, that card's not playable, unfortunately. Another Leyline deck. Leyline Gigantha this time, so Domain Zoo likely. Likely saving the uh, the bobble. Shows the play this game. Okay, five five Kavu, all colors. Huh? I played D and D with a good friend of mine, and he had a a lizard folk character whose name was Seize All Colors. And he was called that because he could see all of the colors. How are we feeling about a double block here? Double block, lose the game to a lightning bolt or, or binding, win the game if they don't have either of those cards, probably. Let's uh, not block. Yeah, you could see blue. <laughs> I think was maybe going to be a little slow here. Maybe need to, I guess we can triple block next turn. Hopefully draw a spell. There's a spell. The opponent has stubborn denial for sure. Good to know about. Or I I'm reading them as having stubborn denial. Yeah, let's go for a triple block next turn. I mean tough to not keep that one, despite the stubborn denial read, I guess. They might, they might also loot away the stub. Uh, I I went one and two in the uh, MTGO 
Masters thing. Beat Brad, then lost to Eduardo, then I lost to Arya. Great, very fun events. Very cool to hang out with Brian a little bit. Always been a big fan of Brian. Cool to hang out with Arya. Big fan of Arya. Nice to meet Eduardo. Seemed really nice. It went really long because there was like an hour of unexpected like MTGO being down right at the beginning, which was kind of frustrating. So it ended up being like a five and a half hour thing, and I was getting I was getting pretty antsy by the end of it, to be honest. But got through it. No, I, I have to win my next two pods to go to top eight. But if I if I lose either of the next two, I'm not in. But there's a there's a losers bracket. Yeah, the, I, honestly, the podcast part was it was my favorite part, just chilling and talking. I I, I did also just have a, a ton of fun with it. Um, but it it just ended up I think it was just too long of a thing. Yeah, so they, they did they did keep a stub here. We're going to go breach, connive. So I guess the question is like, am I chumping this Kavu? Because if I am, I'm discarding the strand. I think I'm not chumping the Kavu because it's like, I, I can't really bank on finding Unholy Heat for it because I'm going to lose most of my graveyard here. Although... Now that we know binding is on top, I'm attacking, I guess. Maybe I just need them to use the binding now for is, is that, for some reason. Not really. I guess they may they may also shuffle. But I also I'm not playing on blocking anyways, but I could play around shuffle into Ragavan. Let's see what I'm drawing. Alright, best card. Yeah, I think there's there's a re like there's a reasonable enough chance they shuffle get a surveil land and they didn't do that unfortunately. Don't want them to binding to don't you want them to binding protect another breacher? No. I'm at seven life, I don't know. I, <laughs> not really. Maybe they don't have a surveil land in their deck. Weird fetch time. Discards the planes, did the bolt, did the tribal flames. Another breach with what? Yeah, we, we have no graveyard, too. I gotta take this real quick. I guess we'll surveil first, because obviously I would love to find Unholy Heat. Wrong removal spell. Four heats, two bolts in the deck. It's nice that the Phantasm will at least be a 5-5. Five, five. Another consider would be kind of a sick blowout. Not that we have that many left in the deck. Well, not that I'm bored. Territorial Kavu is a big creature. I'm gonna go breach bolt bolt. I guess I can. They draw a spell. They, they drew it. They looted away Temple Garden. Gigant in hand, land for turn maybe. The last card is a spell. I yet again find myself at one life. Can I go consider bolt bolt? Go consider exile one two three graveyard any card I find. One card short. We find ourselves alive, but without a ton of fight left in us. A lot, of, a lot of like <laughs> flood and screw today. Another day on Twitch.tv slash Aspiring Spike. Twenty-seven cards deep, no unholy heats. It is. Thoughts on Vampire Deck and Pioneer? It's a cool deck. I uh, somehow they. They must have like they don't have, they don't have stub. They don't have binding. I I don't I actually don't even know what their card can be. Uh, the Gigant is pretty scary. I think I'm still gonna take iteration. Oh, yeah. 
was like a little greedy, of course. So we know one of their cards is binding, so probably no Gigantha next turn. I'm gonna lead on this since I know they have the binding. I don't I guess I don't think they're gonna get it super aggressively though. Also can of course assume that they're not gonna fetch since they didn't fetch the last time we bobbled them. Couldn't you have played surveillance with Breach and make a very big phantasm draw a million cards? Uh no I no I could not have done that. So I don't know, hope that helps, I guess. <laughs> Not sure exactly how you wanted me to do that. They have binding Gigantha mystery card. That's not a. It's not. A, it's not a. The mystery card is not a land either. So I'm. I'm like a little confused as to what it is. They could totally have binding. Wait, wait. Why weren't they just binding my blocker and kill me? They should. They should have binding the phantasm and kill me, right? Oh yes, yeah, it must be a ley line. I'm like trying to think what blank spells are they? Yeah, let's take the breach. And I know like it's very tempting, I think, to take the counter spell and be able to hold it up against a top deck burn spell, but gotta close the game, gotta like like hope this can like draw so much of cards and then find a counter spell potentially. So the hand should be Leyline Gigantha Mystery Card. What's up? You said drywall guy. Yeah. We're calling him mold guy now. Okay, exile, exile, exile. Just the redundant ones. Yeah, they could have a stub. I'm gonna keep the thundering falls. Although I guess I guess I'm not actually because I, I want to keep this and then I, I can't just I can't drop both right now. We're gonna start attacking with our phantasm. I think oh I'll I'll thundering falls here and then I'll bobble them and try to get like some info of, like what they're drawing. Hard to imagine that the pierce is particularly relevant. Uh, I I could definitely see myself wanting mm -hmm. this extra unholy heat. I think I'm mostly digging for Counterspell at the moment, though. I already have a Heat in my hand. Take a peek over there. Well, damn. Mystery card was a stub. Subopotamus, 60 months, thank you, welcome back. Yeah, no shot. <gasps> they shuffled! They did they, 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 they just before. Fuck yeah. In before Bolt, anyways. <laughs> In before Bolt, yeah. I wanted to leave the Oracle back because of Ragavan. Could have maybe prioritized two turn clock. Okay. This means they're dead if they don't chump. Maybe I should have. I probably should have paused a little bit more before attacking. What it looked like. I'm like, oh, I guess I'll attack. They do block. Your turn. My opponent, who is not dead on board, concedes. <laughs> uh, maybe they forgot the game for. Very odd concession timing, but I'll take it. The chump seems kind of crazy. Well, we know they aren't ghosting. Uh... Playing around bolt, I, I think it's I think it's honestly how fast I attacked. I kind of telegraphed the bolt a little bit. I think if I had been a little slower, been harder to read. 
All right, get these pierces out of here, I think. We go down to three counter spell, probably to enhance surveillance. What else? I think they just draw you know, binding. It's very odd. I, they probably drew another ley line for turn and like tilt conceded. It's kind of my read there. Oh, yeah, it's just kind of land, right? Yeah, that was that was an such a like climactic. They shuffled. <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, we're on the draw with potentially several looks at a land because we have the surveil land. Only really need to draw one. I'm gonna keep another one with any creature land. Last game, they I mean last last game they just binding my my six six and then eventually and then after they after they do that they should be able to top deck win right. Any land let them cast Gigantha to chump block again or. To survive into into that. A few more looks at the land. Looking for land, looking for love. I have a friend. That hate archaeologist and Gorio can explain why you like it so much. It's an incredible card selection spell that also puts a body in play. It's an incredible ephemerate. When you ephemerate it, it's like a dig through time. When you mill over, uh, you can milling over your like reanimation target and putting a card into your hand. Oftentimes, feels like you're, you're like you're three for one in because you get the creature. You get you just just get to do everything. It's awesome. I'm still looking for land. Um. I think I think the card's incredible. Another like kind of underrated thing about archaeologist or like is is maybe less obvious is that you don't need to play redundancy to the card Gorio's Vengeance because you have four archaeologist and four dig through time in your deck. If you are if you dig through time archaeologist if you archaeologist ephemerate your archaeologist you're digging nine cards for Gorio's. Um, you can just find it like so much more consistently that you don't have to play like the under underwhelming underpowered cards like. Um, Footsteps of the Gorio. So I, I know that my opponent has Ragavan in their hand, so I think I'm actually just going to play Shredder this turn. So I can maybe get my Shredder back with a Pick Your Poison. Joe land, I maybe just go like Oracle, pick your poison. Have a card in their hand over there too. Would have been okay draw. Would have been actually a really good draw. So Thoughtbound Phantasm. Kind of kind of greedy. But I, I feel that I can get this. I just need to connive one more time. Do your last card is stub. Voice game three. Oh, the first strike on Ragavan also gets me pretty good. I guess I I guess I take six and then try to draw removal spell draw or or fetch land to go like fetch island, breach, pick your poison. They hit iteration. Probably gonna lose this one. So I didn't draw the land. I have three more Unholy Heats and two more Pick Your Poison, so I'll consider. Uh, I guess this is a redraw. All right, any card besides Unholy Heat entering the hand here, we're going to game three. Not an Unholy Heat, go to game three. Get to the play, something that matters so much against Domain Zoo. Probably do want counterspell number four on the play. We could maybe cut the oracle. Yeah, what if we cut the combo on the play? Just still have value breaches. The one spell pierce is okay. 
think of versions that could work in Timeless. Um, I haven't given it a ton of thought. I I think you're not missing almost any cards, right? Like, is the you can just play the exact main deck, right, with different blue fetch lands, but besides that, I think it's just all timeless legal. Maybe I'm forgetting a card. Keep this on the draw. Oh, sorry, I'm on the play. I'm on the play. I'm on the, I'm on the play. Fuck. Close one. <laughs> so I'm going to lead on the channeler bobble here. Um, looking for a fetch land or breeding pool to pick your poison. Let's keep another bobble. Bing. And bolt off of basic planes. I know that they have, um, I know that they have Blood Moon. Sorry, not Blood Moon. I know they have the other Enchantment Hate card. Let's hold up Counterspell this turn. Then we can go like Chandler, pick your poison. We thought of the combo before MKM. We, we've talked about the combo before, like playing Enhanced Surveillance over Grinding Station. It's It's been brought up by Chatters. I've been like, oh, I don't know. Enhanced Surveillance is like maybe a small upgrade to Grinding Station, but also has like some some downsides and um I, I just wasn't sure that it was like a better way to go but I, but like with with the surveil lands it, it all of a sudden is a much much bigger upgrade let's not keep second pick your poison here hopefully we've you know, ruined our opponent's mana here they're fetching here's a little sus no they're, they're playing our blood moon they're not sus at all here in fact, they would, like, never fetch this way if they knew my hand. They would just, like, leave their fetches uncracked or get domain lands. They're also definitely not ghosting. <laughs> or at least they definitely were not ghosting game one. Where we, like, bobbled and saw their top card was lightning bolt and then they shuffled. This is the least sus opponent I've played against in years. All right, well, I guess I'm going to upkeep stop. They play, like, Shoba Brawler, a bolt on upkeep. Shocks and Breeding Pool. Not going to cast a Ley Line at the Go Pact, are you? Nakavu, which is a 5-5 five, five now. How do you feel about upkeep bolt anyways? Uh, I'm feeling okay about it, actually. Nice to not draw that card. Nice to not draw that card. Relatively nice to draw this card. Oh, sorry, I, I have stacked incorrectly though. So I, I guess I'll just keep this on top because I'm I'm uh discarding. I just want to spell, but they don't have a binding. It's gonna be so hard for them to win. They don't have a binding. Yeah, if I if I had stacked better, we obviously could just have this bolt in hand. They have to have three removal spells. Seems so hard. We may have one last turn. I know they drew one just now. Yeah, the deck has an infinite combo with enhanced surveillance, channel, or bubble breach. But it's like with uh, enhanced surveillance, you just get to dump like your whole deck in your graveyard and get that combo. We did board out the, uh, and then you have Thassa's Oracle. Then we bo we boarded out the uh, surveillances and the combos on the, the surveillances and the uh, Oracle on the play in this matchup, which I think was a good plan. Probably probably should be doing that in most, like, grindy matchups. Just, like, just remove the uh, the combo. It's only four cards. Mulligan. One of those two. This is, like, Need the Shredders. Um... I do feel like the Shredders are more flex spotty than some of the other cards, but I think I, I like the card. 
Sticky cheeky. Yeah, I've been liking this deck too. I guess I lead on Bobble myself. I'm gonna be also I'm gonna go plug my phone in real quick. I I do agree with Eduardo that like a big part of the reason why Gorios is good is that there's not a lot of graveyard hate. But there's also not a lot of graveyard hate because there's a lot of Cascade, both Rhinos and like the, Rhinos is a lot more popular than Living End, and when that's the case, it's like. Kind of tough to play Graveyard Hate over Cascade Hate. Uh, I'll keep this Consider, I guess, and then... Same back the Bobble. It's also why Living In is good. Yeah, I mean, I agree, but... The thing is, like, Living In also play just in general plays through Hate cards really well. It's not like... You can play five Graveyard Hate cards in your sideboard and still <laughs> just not have a good Living In matchup. It's kind of wild. Yeah, I'm gonna get a little, little, little greedy with this keep, but I draw a red source here, it's so crazy. Not exactly that red source necessarily, but I guess it's actually still a very good draw. And then keeping this seems fine and not keeping it also seems fine. Blitz. Keep it. Wish we had a combo control deck that was good to modern. I, I mean, I'm playing one right now. <laughs> Or at least it's all control. Control is good, also. I, I I think I also disagree. I think, like, there's a lot of good blue-white lists. Like, the Snap Flame lists are probably back to being underplayed. Well, underplayed, like, just, like, a month ago. But uh, blue-white control is good. I think it's a, just a general good modern deck. Shout out. Th Phantasm over Ragavan. Just lose the game if this was a Ragavan. Yeah, I'm like a, maybe maybe not great. That's fine to keep this. Let's go crazy. Up here seems okay to keep too. We're oh, yeah, gonna bolt the channeler though. Yeah, creativity is creativity is also back and good again. And that is like kind of that's maybe modern's like quintessential combo control deck. Someone someone once said, like, every good deck is combo control, which is not you know, exactly true, but combo control, very good archetype. I guess this, I guess this deck is kind of like combo tempo, combo tempo. <laughs> For a tri-melder. It kind of seems like they might advance one at some point. I mean, you'd think it'd be super safe, but... They have like the la when they when they made the last ban announcement, they like explicitly said that they're not very interested in unbanning Twin. So seems seems not the most likely. So they bolt the smaller Phantasm instead of the Channeler, which I guess is okay. Um, I think we're supposed to do. Oh, I, I definitely want to have Spell Pierce up for the One Ring this turn. And we should very likely have lethal for next turn. Um, it's also like, I guess it's just a graveyard, so I get delirium here. Yeah, I do think there is going to be a, a BNR window soon. I, I don't necessarily expect anything to get banned, but we're unbanned. But there, there, there should be one. I feel like then they say it was gonna be like a month after set release, so isn't that like next week? Major set. We just then we just have MKM though. Ban violent outburst and grief. <laughs> I mean, scam kind of sucks. So it's, I mean, it's not bad, but it's like the seventh best deck I think at the moment. I think I put Yogmoth, Yogmoth, Titan, Living End, Rhinos, um, Domain Zoo, Worktide over it. I feel like there's one like big deck I'm forgetting, and then like also like Gorios is like kind of the best deck in modern, and nobody's playing it. But it's kind of hard to rate it that highly because no one's playing it. But like I kind of think I think Gorios is kind of like top three at least. The scam is very good against Gorios, so like you could see Rise of Scam it happen if there was Rise of Gorios. Like. 
Yeah, I think I think Domain Zoo and Merchant are both better than Scam, and I think like these are kind of the six six decks. World Souls Rage, huh? Very cool. Yeah, Blue White's pretty good too. It's like a brown scam tier for me. I think Omnath is okay. Creativity is also good. I don't know, like, like for for me, tier one is like Rhinos, Yogmoth, Gorias. And tier two is like Amulet Living in Domain Zoo Murktide. And tier three is like Blue White Scam create, or Creativity. Maybe Creativity is higher though. I haven't, I haven't like been playing against it a ton. Tier, tier zero is, of course, any deck containing Thought Bound Phantasm. Okay, so they're playing Red Green, World Souls Rage, Valakit. Almost definitely a ring deck. So let's bring in the Needle. Take your poison can kill Dryad Ring, doesn't kill Rin and Six. Scales. I think Scales is pretty bad at the moment. I maybe tier three move. Scales has to be at least tier two. I mean Scales is very bad against Yogmoth, very against against very bad against it, it's bad against like every deck I think is tier one. It's bad against Yogmoth and like, Gorios. Again, Gorios is very far down, so it's kinda hard to say that. I don't think the matchup against Living in is as good as I previously thought, but I think it's still like I think it's still good. It's good against Scam. It's good against Rhinos. It's good against Murktide. It's good against Domain Zoo. Yeah, maybe Scales is okay. But it's kind of, it's kind of like good against the Tier 2 decks, not the Tier 1. How are we sideboarding here, though? <laughs> uh, three Heats, one Bolt. I think I want one Bolt. The Shredder could happen. Oh, you probably want to keep all the creatures. Maybe pick your poisons better than heat. So heat kills Ren and Six. He kills Ren and Six, but pick your poison kills the one ring. And they both kill Dryad. Although killing Dryad at instant speed is also pretty pretty real. I don't know, this is kind of a tough upside boarding. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to heat. Three heat, one bolt. I need to cut one more card. Um I need to cut two cards. Shoot. Oh, I didn't. I, was, I accidentally brought in the skull and cut one card. Let's cut the fourth iteration. On the draw. Is Miracles good against all the tier one decks? I think it's good against Rhinos and Yogg, and it's not like bad against Gorios. It's. I don't think it's favored against Titan, but you could win that matchup. Well, I guess like when can when can you not right? Hey, Miracles is fine. The thing is, Miracles is a deck that like does just very much reward you for drawing really, really well. <laughs> um, it is it is a, a super swingy deck. It's a super swingy deck, and like ye- yesterday we were running really bad with it. I felt, and like when we first played, we were running really good, and we you know trophied and like just had like a great numbers. And so, to some extent, you always have to run well with decks, but. Miracles has always been a high variance control deck, where a lot of times, like the appeal of playing control to players is getting to play a lower variance deck. But that is, you know, certainly not the the Miracles experience. I'll shred a ledger, I guess. Try to keep the other smoke pierce. Maybe I should have fetched island first, though, huh? There's a chance I wanted to fetch another surveil land. Espergorius is a deck of like, yeah, I, I think Espergorius is probably the most underplayed deck. I was saying this last week when we played it on stream. It's just like. It's just kind of good against everything and super powerful and consistent. I would definitely play four force negation in the main deck. That's that's something I would I would do if I was gonna play the, the archetype at the moment. Iteration heats. Probably kind of cooked here though. Yeah, I haven't been veiled so hard like, <laughs> like that in a while, I guess. Ryan's not good, kind of thankful it's not a ring. Also, no extra land is. Very good. The hand is all 
spells. Let's iterate, looking for counter spell. I guess I'm taking an unholy heat. Essence Flunk and Espergorios. I would play the I would play um Touch the Spirit Realm over Espergorios. I think I think right now I also still like I didn't hate push pull. Push pull was okay. Um it being like an out of blood moon is also pretty pretty cool to me. I, I think I want I want the first touch the spirit realm. I don't think I want to play two. Roll Souls Rage for one. I guess that's a card that makes sense for them to have here. Okay, definitely keeping counter spells. Kind of looking for enhanced surveillance mostly. Let's go Shredder, Channeler, Connive, Shock, Counterspell up. I think discarding iteration is okay. Being, being able to go like double consider end of turn if I don't if they don't play something I need to counter would be good. They can have another Veil of Summer too, which would be problemo, I guess. We will allow Chandler to die. Warren Dragon Rage's Chandler later. Feels good to be shredding again. Yeah, these are fine. I'm gonna double consider end of turn. Very much looking for enhanced surveillance. We're we're, we're not going to quite be able to combo if we draw it next turn. We have to dig pretty deep. You can see the spell pierce still being alive against the World Souls Rage deck. Let's kind of reluctantly keep it. And we do find enhanced surveillance. So to fully combo with Oracle. We'll need to just play this and pass. But hopefully hopefully counter spell spell pierce up. Let's us to untap and win. They they also it, it's it's also really nice when you're playing like your enchantment based combo deck and your opponent ha just already has their Besage you in play. This is creativity. Yeah, the creativity is pretty good. I, I even kind of like the um seismic assault creativity deck that Jarvis was playing like a month ago. I will cast Counterspell. And maybe die to Landscape Shift. Not on ability of users there on. Uh, we, it doesn't look like an exact list I played. I, I never played Soccer Tribe Elder in this archetype, but we have been playing some Titan, uh, Titan Velika decks lately. It doesn't look like a, a, a list I put together. Surveil so 3. Not that it really matters, because we just have, have our combo. So we're just going to mill our entire library and then escape fast as Oracle. Or that occasionally I hear win some games of magic. Before endurance, give me done endurance. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I surely also like if they had endurance, like we would have heard about it by now. I think. So this is grinding station that doesn't play saga, um, and also doesn't play grinding station. 
Like what's nice what's really nice about like this plan versus the grinding station plan is like enhanced surveillance is less of a two minute do nothing where it turns your surveillance and your channelers and your considers into like crazy dig spells to set up your combo. Hopefully the Fastest Oracle is actually in the bottom eight cards and not in my sideboard somehow. Let's you run a combo to clock, like to remove clock time on my timer. GG's. They're just waiting to see the Oracle. I'll let you do the thing. Thank you. Well, never feel obligated to let me do the thing. I was stuck against Graveyard Hate. Um, I mean, Graveyard Hate is okay against you, for sure. But, like, it's it's very nice to just have, like, four Thoughtbound Phantasm and four Ledger Shredders as, like, you have, like, an excellent beatdown plan, and you, you're also, like, able to side away from the combo. You can pick your poison a lot of Graveyard Hate. Um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, I think, I'm, I, think I should probably lead on Channeler. If this is a matchup where, for some reason, I want to lead a counterspell in turn two, I'd rather have played Channeler turn one. And the Phantasm can also be 5 5 by itself, it doesn't actually need Channelers up here because I just have three Surveil Lands. Oh, also, we were playing only three Surveil Lands in the, the previous non combo version of this build. I think I would play four even in the non combo now that I've been playing the fourth one. Going with the draw step stop. Fluffy face, 21 months. Thank you, welcome back. Hope you're doing well today. Reveal trigger, enhanced surveillance, bobble, millions. So you went, you went Oracle 1, yeah. Mm -hmm. How many decks are one card away from playable deck in modern? Uh, lots, probably. <laughs> Basically every deck I've ever played on stream. Black white surveil and surveil solitude in the yard. So this is probably Aspergorios. Yep. No, three lands. Okay, Archaeology is bad actually. I take it all back. Um, don't really need to hold up counter magic this turn since they just don't have an attracts in the yard. Ooh. Where are we going? Going after the phantasm, huh? Well, I'll take one mana, gain four, discard two cards, I guess. Draw off the bobble, draw for turn. One of these cards is an expressive iteration. Ooh. Yeah, I think I'm okay. Potentially not getting both cards if I don't find a bobble to, to have the extra pressure in play. Although graveyarding for Delirium certainly feels reasonable. Crit? Critic? Crit, but, but. Seven months, thank you, welcome back, hope you did well. Why is Archaeology still good in the deck? Um, it's it's an incredible card selection spell where you get to, like, you, you, you do usually put a spell into your hand. So usually you are both, like, digging for Gorios, digging for Ephemerate, digging for interactive spells, while also being able to mill over a Traxa. It's also an O3 that can, like, block Ragavan by time. If, when you Ephemerate Archaeologist, it feels like casting a one-mana dig through time. Um, and it also means you don't have to play redundancy to Gorios if you don't want to, where you just get to dig so deep for it. It's it's no longer like I think like required. Like it has felt in in some some iterations to play uh, extra ways to return creatures. 
Probably gonna breach next turn. Iteration, I guess. But also, again, just like just just compare this thoughtbound phantasm to the Urza Saga Plan B that you know, that you know whoever whoever was the chatter that said is it the Saga token Plan B just better like this is so fast you you win most of your games with phantasm and then it's in a lot of ways it's almost like the combo is your Plan B. Like, I think we have we we may we may just have lethal next turn we'll see off the breach bobbles maybe a little short. The surveil land here. Finally found a deck you like Phantasm in. Um, I mean, I've been liking Phantasm, but like, I think this is the best Phantasm build we've had, and um, I I don't know. I feel like Phantasm has just kind of been good every time we've played it. Like, there's a reason I keep I keep putting the card of these blue red builds. Up a game against Gorios. Nice to have a couple fluster storms for this matchup. Yeah, I, I think I think the main deck is like literally all timeless legal here, and then the sideboard is all timeless legal except for explosives and totem. But you, you also need to build a different sideboard because it's a different format. But like I I I, th I think like you like you, you can't play nine blue fetches in timeless, so like that's one like small thing. But you maybe main deck breeding. Oh, you probably don't need pick your poisons in sideboard of timeless. I'm not going to bring in Pick Your Poison. I know it can kill a Traxa. Uh, I think I'm just down two heats. Oh, you get to play Lurus also, right? An upgrade. Heat does really suck. Um, I guess Scolding counters Archaeologist, Grief, Solitude. Scolding's probably just got to be the, the card here. I'm going to keep this one. What color do you splash to play Lurus? Well, I guess at first you just identify, do you want Swords of Plowshares in your deck? Do you want Bowmasters in your deck? And then go from there. Tactical Banana, thank you for the five months. Hope you're doing well. Lately, my, for breakfast every morning, I just have one banana. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I guess I'll bobble them before I... Play this one just get a little bit more info. I'm glad they didn't get to surveil that into the yard. Um, Grief this for Delirium seems okay. I, I also like feel like I need to find a piece of interaction before I can keep a combo card like this. They do mill Atraxa, and they put Faithful Mending a Dragon. When you do this with Archaeologist, you, mi you mill your reanimator card, and then you find a spell. It's just like... Those, those are the turns with Archaeologist that are just so crazy. And then you also just have a, a creature in play that you can ephemerate for crazy value. Um, I think I probably have a hard time playing around the Gorios here. I'm going to consider, and then maybe they bolt, they ephemerate and I bolt in response. They mending in response, which is interesting. Discard two more Atraxas. They, did they not draw that Gristlebrand? I feel like they probably should have been that one, right? Just have the diversity of targets, and these also pitched better. What are you bolting if not for the archaeologist? Well, I, I want to bolt the archaeologist in response to the ephemerate that I know is in their hand. I'm not. I'm not going to just main phase bolt the O3 when I have a flyer. Also, I think I'm keeping this. I don't know. I just like really want to find another like one mana counter spell, but just like obviously this card is also upgraded when. You have Chandler. Mending flashback to life, so nice. This card's all, all four Atraxas and the Gristlebrand in the yard, so 
Sure would like a Tormont's Crypt right about now, I guess. Yeah, if Emory fizzles, it does not get rebounded. It needs to resolve. The Graveyard of Grief, which I think is kind of interesting since the Grief is probably a reasonable play for them to have here, although they don't have double black at the moment. Probably could have had double black if they... Two. I think I'm going to go fetch Surveil Dual Land into Consider here. I think there is a good chance there's a Hardcast Solitude coming my way. I'm just going to actually just draw this. Was good to be right. I guess I will also consider now so that I can actually use my surveil. Yeah, that kind of lets me go like shredder, spell pierce, counter spell up next turn. Put it discards, planes, flooded strand. I'm gonna let this go, I think. I, it's just too bad if they Gorios me. They mill an Indulgence, Ephemerate, Thoughtseize. They choose Thoughtseize. Shocks and Watery Grave. Thoughtseize, which just resolves, I think. One of my two counter spells. So now, Drawn Spell Pierce. I'm going to think when I want to bolt. Probably on their turn. This is pretty bad if they have a, just another Ephemerate and I don't get to Spell Pierce it. Can we just have you play, please? I see a lot about them. I've heard different things. I, I've had I've played them in two tournaments. I've had good experiences. I've also heard that they sometimes split, but for me, I really like the rounded corners and I haven't had any issues with them. I hear I, I hear that occasionally they do they do split, though. So... Factor that in, but for for me, I would I would just be like somewhat comfortable. Um, oh, I meant to me. I cast this on my turn. I'd, I'd be pretty comfortable just taking the L sometimes because I, I like you're just not marking your cards as often in the tournament, and I, I I can be kind of paranoid about accidentally having marked cards. Um, but I also hope, you know have confidence that the. Uh, they can hammer that out if that continues to be an issue. They choose Tainted Indulgence here. But, you know, like, like, like one thing is it's like when you're shuffling over the course of the day and you don't have the rounded sleeves, you have the corners, you're, you're literally dinging every single sleeve in your deck. Every single sleeve in your deck gets like a little ding on the corner. And, in so, and this is kind of fine, right? Because every sleeve in your deck has the dings, and so they kind of like start to match, and it's hard to discern what's going on. But the big problem is, it, it becomes like pretty clear usually that you have a sideboard card. The biggest problem is like it, it, it's just clear that you have a sideboard card in your hand a lot of times because those corners are not dinged, but the the main deck cards are. And so that this is like this is a very common problem. Just like at the end of a one day tournament, like I noticed this at, at Atlanta. Like, at the end of my first day, my corners were just, like, my sideboard was, like, very clearly my sideboard card. And my main deck was very clearly main deck. And it was, like, around then I talked to the heavy play guy, and he was talking about the, the rounded corners. It was just very funny kind of uh, coincidence there. But I but I did not have this issue uh, when I played the 75k last weekend. And I, I this is, like, why I really like the heavy play sleeves. Is I don't have to worry about losing a match because of marked cards. Keeping our seven card hand. Uh, I'm going to bobble myself, and I think if I see, like, exactly Channeler... Well, I guess I could just draw the channel. Let's, let's, just, let's just hold the bobble for a turn. Yeah, let's... Ex uh, yeah, Gamba's at 3-0. Oh. Gotta be watching the stream. Seems like a lot of waste. Maybe. I mean, I play, like, four or five tournaments a year, so it's, like... For me, it's not like a ton of sleeves that I go through. If you're if you're playing like if you're resleeving for every single RCQ, I don't know, can add up. Yeah, 
Because we also get, like, the bobble. You know. Turn 1, Urza Saga. So, likely a deck that contains Amulet of Vigor. There's the Amulet of Vigor. Did not have my Spell Pierce up this turn. Unluckily for me. Of course, another consider. Let's, let's go ahead and keep that. Get the Phantasm online really quick. Maybe the Saga token here. Well, scared of placing, you know, what appears to be a very good amulet draw. Do you think I have to counterspell that? I draw enhanced surveillance. I think I should be okay to consider here where it's not. I, like, th there's a good chance they just play the ring this turn and I can spell pierce it. If I miss a land, I can also find a land and then um, be in just much better shape in general. Just play a saga this turn. I'm going to graveyard the heat, despite it kind of being an okay hard to have here to be honest love another counter spell love a land love the land awesome okay so we have a four turn clock in play um should be okay to tap out for the surveillance i think we'll see i guess you can maybe make some some chump blockers No chump blocker here. So let's go ahead and surveil three, attack for six. We have a breach, maybe? Or to say no to a consider that surveils three. Better than brainstorm, huh? Maybe find bolt and then the. Six plus three, you'll get there. Maybe consider into consider or consider into breach or something. Argon, 14 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. A lot of amulets. They said to not copy an amulet here, which is. Thing. Cast Counterspell, targeting Primeval Titan. Getting pretty close to killing here. We need a Bolt, Breach, or Consider into another Surveil. Should do it. Game one, and we even beat a... Uh, Besage you. Oh. Not bound Phantasm, baby. This card is just very good. <laughs> okay, we're going to bring in... I remember thinking about my cyborg plan this morning. Is these five cards or... The bolts of the pierces? Although, I would... But then I was like, do I want to play... Do I want to play one spell pierce? Do I want to play 19 lands? Do I want to play... Do I want to cut a land for the breeding pool? This is kind of where I was stuck this morning thinking about this matchup. Do I want to play one bolt? I think... I think no to the bolt. I think... I think on the draw, let's go ahead. I think, I think on the play, I think I'll do 19 lands. Or uh, uh, 18... Yeah, 19 lands. And on the draw, let's do 18. Oh, sorry. This is just five for five already. Never mind. This is the cyber plan then. <laughs> I guess I did. I guess I did figure it out this morning. Okay. Uh, I'm also. I'll use the restroom right now. Be right back. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. 
What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. Two tap lands on the Dragon's Titan. What's up? I do really like having a needle for ring. I'm gonna mull again. What's one. up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. Yeah, Chandler feels important enough to go with the Phantasm to, to draw it here instead of casting this. Triad. Garrison. I guess I'm looking for a land so I can go Chandler, pick your poison into Thoughtbound Phantasm. Counterspell up. On the land. Pick your poison. Of delirium also is nice. Uh oh. Live with that one. Their hand is Boros Garrison, three mystery cards at the moment, right? No one ring, awesome. They also need a, a green source to even cast the Titan, so yeah, be two of their four cards. Craver at that here against the uh, ability to pick up a Jukabog and replay it. Yeah, Thalbun Phantasm is like, I, I say this knowing how dumb it sounds, much better than Ragavan Nimble Pilferer. <laughs> Imagine saying this at the beginning of Modern Horizons 2. <laughs> Both cards legal at the same time. I think the card just rules. I, <laughs> it's like, oh, you have a Boro Grazer, you have two of them, can't, you have the Legend rule. So many spots. Obviously, there are times where Ragavan is a good card. Let's all agree on that. They didn't flip the man off the Bajookabog. But they're just so juiced, I don't know. Yeah, I consider also didn't have a it's errata. Or consider wasn't even legal yet. I think I guess I could save the fetch for an extra surveil. I don't need the extra surveil so bad because it's just you know two ten power creatures. Maybe trading grazer for uh, channeler, which would be okay because we just have them dead next turn. So Phantasm being good is only a symptom of DR being so good. Sure, but DRC is so good. And uh And and also like they, they, these would not be playable without the surveil lands. Like you, you do need the surveil lands to like make this card like playable when you don't draw Chandler. When you do, do when you do draw Chandler, it's like Holy Guacamole. Fat Master, 39 months, thank you, welcome back. And we have Trophied with four Thoughtbound Phantasm and three <laughs> enhanced surveillance in our modern deck. Pretty good. Let's go open these chests. Let's do another one too. Maybe do pirates tomorrow. I'm pretty hyped about this one. I may want to play in the challenge this weekend. Unenhanced reform. I, I think. I think